What's up, ACL Nation? Welcome into Bagging and Bragging episode four. I'm going to run out of fingers soon, Mish, but we're trucking right along. Got an interesting episode today. We're going to bring on the squad that Michelle hated to interview. <laughs> You're so rude. Jimmy <laughs> Graham and Trevor Brooks joining us. We also have five clips from open number three that was in East Moline. And uh, we got a, we got a pretty interesting show ahead of us, Mish. Let's go ahead and get into it. Uh, how was your weekend? How's everything going? Um, bad. Oh. I played I played in a regional and I I shot like a four. Like I don't know what happened. It, it happens. It happens. No, it does not happen. You gotta you got every every skyscraper has a nice basement, Mish. Remember that. <laughs> what? What? You got to build now. Now you build. You work okay, it. but here's the crazy thing is that on Wednesday at league, I shot the best I've ever shot. I, I shot over an eight, over a nine. Like I was trucking along. It felt right. Like everything felt good. And then at the regional, nothing felt good. I could not get my throw at all. And I was, and it was freezing in there. So I would love to blame that because Do I it. like, I don't know if that's can, can have an effect on your game, but I, I think so. I hate throwing cold bags. I hate throwing when my fingers are cold. I'm in the same exact boat. I, I'm with you. I just couldn't get comfortable. And I felt bad because my partner, she threw amazing. She was throwing like nines and I was throwing fours. And so, you know, it just <laughs> you can't pick me up that much. <laughs> yeah. So I haven't even picked up a bag early since Thanksgiving. Um, you guys didn't get a chance to see it, but we had the match. Jake Brandon and myself defeated Anthony and Trey Ryder. It it's was never happened. It was 27 to nothing. Nice. It was awesome. It's awesome. Nice. Nice. But yeah, I haven't picked up a bag since Thanksgiving. Oh and my, my buddy, goodness. my buddy Nick Mendina asked me to come over to his house and hang out and watch football and just relax and get Chipotle. And I'm like, all right, let's go, let's go. And I'm like seven and zero against this guy, right? So okay. I have to pick my matches carefully. He's throwing very well, so he invited <laughs> me over. His family's very hospitable. Shout out to his parents. And uh, you talking about Thanksgiving? Play. No, this was yesterday. Oh, this was yesterday. Yeah, okay. so I haven't picked up a bag for like over a month. And you played in Myrtle he, Beach. You played Crew Cup. I mean, on, on, yeah, on well, boards that were 28 feet apart. <laughs> they were like more than that, but that's okay. <laughs> but no, uh, <laughs> yeah, so he wanted to play the match. I'm like, all right, you're, you bought me Chipotle. You're having me over. Let's go ahead and play a game. And I lost to him. So I'm like, there I it goes. I did not think that story was going that direction. You I really thought that be, was going to be a redemption story. <laughs> no, I can't be undefeated against him anymore because he beat me that one time. <laughs> like even with the asterisk next to it, though, but. Oh my goodness! Uh, good job, Nick. Yeah. Well, so we're not really counting that one because no. there was a, a, a time where you didn't throw. I guess exactly. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Man, yeah. our our uh, next segment where we are supposed to be bragging is going to be pretty pathetic. We can't yeah. come we up with We need to have anything. a what's the opposite of bragging? Like grind my gears segment or something? Yeah, well, that's like a mouthful. We'd no, I got be, some good stuff. We'd be unbragging. Um, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> that's that's not a real word. But. Uh, but anyways, we'll take a quick break and we'll come back to you with our uh, bragging section right after this. All right, we'd be bragging. Um, I do have something to brag about, but what do, what do you want to brag about, Wally? I want to brag about my daughter. Okay. Happy 16th go. birthday, Jade Casper. I love you. 16. I'm very excited to see you grow up and become a, an elite athlete in volleyball softball whatever you play um, i'm very happy to see where you've come um i'm a big super one. proud of dad yep so sorry you didn't get the birthday party that you wanted to um glad i got to go home and see her we had a nice dinner uh family came through clutch and let me ask you this Lamish. if you ever go out to dinner and people want to you've done this to me a couple times too like when you pick up the tab like you pick up my tab sometimes how many times do you argue that like no i got my own tab i got my own tab before you just let it go like I on the person who's offering or on the person. No, like if like if somebody's buying me food, I'm like, no, you don't need to buy me food. I'll get it. I'll take care of it. Well, and somebody then, offers to buy me food, I always say yes immediately because I always want the universe to know that I'm open to receive. Okay. And if if it's sending me a gift, I'm never going to refuse a gift. And I also am the type of person that I would never offer if I didn't truly want to. I don't do things out of obligation ever. Yeah. So I if I'm offering, like I want too. to. Yeah, it's like an insult to turn it down. So I, I'm working on it. I, I'm down to one now. I'll, I'll refuse it one time, and then if you if you know I got it, all right, I'll let you pay for it. But yeah, somebody picked up my tab for my daughter's birthday. Wow, like sixteen people. That, like, like, what do you mean, I, someone like a family member? I don't know. What? 
Yeah, the, nobody would tell me. Oh, someone in the sixteen. Yeah, someone people in the sixteen picked up, picked but they up the whole tab. They wouldn't tell you who. Yeah, so I'm like, I feel I like I. I guess I literally just went home and ate dinner with my daughter, and that's it. I didn't pay for anything. I just I well, and I will. But. I will say this too. There has been many times in my life where I've been flat broke, like, and then been in situations where. Mm-hmm. It, there's a requirement of a payment and being in a predicament where I'm like, crap, because I want to go to this person's birthday dinner, for example, but I literally can't afford to. Yeah. And so I've been in those situations where people have picked up the tab for me when I truly couldn't afford it and how appreciative I am of that. So when I'm in a space where I do have extra, I love to be able to do that for people, um, even if they can't afford it, but especially if they can't. And that was really cool. So whoever you are, mystery, mystery page, mystery person, editor, thank you very much. I, I, Definitely appreciative of that. Um, but I think the kiddo is happy. She's getting ready to go to Panama next month. So we got the passport thing taken care of. Should be in in the next couple of weeks. Um, and then uh, I think I mentioned it on maybe episode one, but we have our 10,000 follower giveaway Saturday, Mish. Ooh, so Corn and I are going to put together the marble races. You'll get a, a chance to see what the marble races look <laughs> yes, like in that's person. Right. It's the marble races. Yeah. So we're going to do a broadcast. Not sure on the time yet. Probably like 4 or 5 p.m. So. That'd be what two or three o'clock for you, probably. Um, but it'd be kind of fun. I'm looking forward to just giving away a whole bunch of free stuff with the you know the sponsors behind me. You know, they they're on board and we got some pretty valuable stuff coming on. That's really cool. Um, I like it. Cool. Anything, anything else you're bragging on? I'm just bragging about um the the sideline reporting, not my yeah. job at it, <laughs> because that's not for me to say, but I'm just excited that I got the opportunity and also it felt like the ACL really trusted me because they kept putting yep. me in situations that I wasn't prepared for that. I was like, all right, they must think I can do this or they wouldn't keep putting like, Hey, we're going to have you do this thing. Have you do this thing? And um, I just really appreciate how the ACL kind of sees what you like and what you think you're good at and what you can excel at. And they just let you try it. And I, and I don't think everybody's like that. Like, yeah. and, and they really, I feel like in a sense, rolled the dice since I technically don't have, sideline reporting experience even though i have tv experience and interview experience <laughs> i've never technically done it in this way yeah that is a good point because it's kind of interesting trey Ryder and ac i saw his tweet yesterday announcing that you guys were gonna take on a more pivotal role but it's interesting because they, they almost throw you in the fire yeah um but it, it's a trust thing they're like all right i have faith in you i don't need to worry about you messing anything up you got this now i can go worry about something else and it, really? it's, yeah. it's refreshing yet well, at the same time, kind of stressful. Well, and I have to say, like, you know, there's not a lot of things that have challenged me that greatly lately. Uh, I've kind mm-hmm. of been able to do things that are like really in my wheelhouse and that I'm super comfortable with. Like, even all through Girls Throw 2, like, all the tasks were very easy for me. There wasn't really anything that I was like, whoa, that really, you know, made me have to challenge myself and grow. I mean, yes, I'm mentally, mentally, emotionally, but I mean, just the actual jobs. This was the first time that I was like, way out of my comfort zone. <laughs> I'm like, all right, I don't even have time to process how uh, uncomfortable this is. I just have to literally do it because there's no time to even process it. And yeah, it was fun to feel that way because it's been a long time since I felt that challenged. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited. Um, I, I felt like I got a little job security at the draft. Um, Trey is, I mean, we had our meeting after that draft and we kind of put our heads together about what we want to do for next year and some things that are going to work. So I think it's going to be really, really cool. You know, I got to get myself in in broadcast shape because I feel like I'm going to be on the on the camera a little bit more next year. So yeah, we need you. Yeah. Yeah, we need so both of you. Fun. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think I think Trey's getting to the point now where he's like, all right, it's college football season at this time. I'll just kind of let you guys <laughs> handle posted. it. <laughs> yeah. Clemson's getting close. They might be in a final at some point. So yeah, good call. Good call. Yeah. All right, that, that could th- be. One other thing I want to brag about real quick. It was really cool yesterday. I was laying in bed and I got a couple like notifications on my phone. I'm like, what the heck is going on? It's like I'm watching Yellowstone. I'm <laughs> under the covers. Leave me alone, right? <laughs> Don't but they nah, know? It was really, really cool. I tuned into the uh, Man Cave Monday broadcast. Shout out to Brian and Bev. Um, and I saw Chuck Krasinski, Jordan, James Franklin, and Mike Vitti. Shout out to you guys in the championship match. All four, all four guys were throwing K9 collab bags. Ooh, there you so go. It was all K9 collab final. Like I've been waiting to call a championship match with all my bags <laughs> in the finals. They were throwing the Vipers and the Vortex Shelters. So I think that's pretty nice. cool. Yeah, that is super cool. I love it. Yeah. Hey, there you go. 
So I'm glad I got the notifications. Yeah, you're, all right, fine. You can interrupt me yeah. in my Yellowstone I'll allow haze. It. I'll allow it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, cool. Well, um, that's all we got for our bragging section. We'll take a quick break and we'll be back right after this. All right. Welcome, everyone. Uh, we are so excited to have our guests here with us today. We've got Jamie Graham and Trevor Brooks. Pretty sure you know who they are. Um, but if not, we uh, wanted to invite the Carolina Coasters on, um, not just because they're super cool and have a great team, but because I did not get to talk to you guys at the draft. We actually saved you guys for last because we wanted to talk about your entire team when it was complete. But the draft took so long that we were kind of like, oh, we should probably just wrap this thing up and go. So we were bummed that we didn't get to talk to you guys then. So we brought you on our show. So welcome. Thanks for having us. What up, boys? Thank you, guys. What up, it's good to be here. <laughs> That's an interesting first question. So for us, it seemed like it was flying by. For the viewers at home, it seemed like it took forever. As far as captains go, did it seem like it was going pretty quick to you guys? Or did you guys feel like uh, you had plenty of time back there? having the serpentine pick it was um, it was pretty cool with the 90 second thing i mean because it felt like it you know it was kind of nervous for it at the beginning mm -hmm. and it was like oh we only got 90 seconds to choose it did a good job of keeping the board up and keeping us updated on players and being prepared you know two or three spots before you have to go you got to go ahead and be prepared what two or three guys are going to be available when it comes your turn because those 90 seconds you know if you ain't got something some figured out halfway through then it then it's a it's a rush after that yeah, it feels fast. Yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. I would agree with that. But yeah, it felt like nobody took 90 seconds. Like, <laughs> except for one time, somebody picked someone that already got picked and then they had to scramble. I think it was the uh, Arizona burn. Other than that, nobody really took their t that time. And that's because of how prepared you guys were. So did it feel that way going in? Did you feel like you were fully prepared and, and ready to go? Um. Yeah, I think we were mostly. Here you go. There you go. <laughs> <My bad. laughs> it's all good. I think we were uh, mostly prepared. I mean, we didn't know that uh, Tyler and Frank were going to be gone just like that. But once uh, Mark's team took Tyler, uh, it was kind of just a, a re reflex. I was like, hey, let's get the world champs, Jordan James. And, uh, Why not? But – you know, that backfired. So, hey, yeah, it's you want to talk for like two minutes, huh? Yeah, say, so do you want to talk about what backfired there? Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was an interesting uh, first trade that happened. Yeah. Uh, I mean, Jordan, he just surprised me. He surprised everybody at the table. Um, so, like, once I picked him, we had that little uh, time for a ring ceremony and I went up to him and I was like, Hey, I got you. And then he was like, who'd you get after me? And I said, James, as soon as I told him that his face just changed and he was like, you could have got him later. And I'm like, oh, okay, wow. Like your world's double champs, like your friend, like I thought this was going to be like an exciting moment. You can like, that's great. Mm -hmm. But I don't know, like that early, and that was the first two picks, and I don't like negative energy, especially that early into a draft. And really, if after we thought about it, we should have got Berkeley off the rip anyways, not even Jordan, because Berkeley plays yeah. with Trevor. And, but I guess everything works out the way it's supposed to. So, Yeah, personally, I don't mind the trade. I know uh, some people have come out verbally on Facebook saying that you know they don't like it. It doesn't make sense trading a first for a third, but – the only reason he's a third is because he got picked in the third. In my opinion, yeah. I always had Berkeley Pair going to you guys in the first. Yeah. So it for me, it makes sense. Well, it might not make sense skill wise to some people, but it makes sense energy wise from what you're describing. Yeah, I had I had James and Jordan for experience. I knew oh. that we were all going to be on TV this year. I knew that they have one on TV, and they're a great team and they're friends, but. I just, I, did, I didn't want to put up with the negative energy, so I had to let them go. Um, I just, a lot of people didn't know the backstory of that, like, I wouldn't just drop Jordan Campbell off my team unless there was a legitimate reason he needed to be gone. But uh, I guess he, like, uh, who said it in a pocket? I think y'all said it for the uh, you, Trey, and Anthony, like, Jordan made it easy. 
we won yeah. it virtually, so he just made it very easy to drop. So, yeah, it definitely worked. I think works out for the better in terms of the overall energy of the team. You know, it's not just about stats and what people do on broadcast. It's also about how can this team all work the best together. Right. And Berkeley's obviously a good fit there. I bet he was pretty excited. Yeah. Well, see, with Berkeley, there was no doubt he was going to be on the team uh, before the draft even started. He's on my team, you know. But I feel like Jordan and, and him, they're tit for tat. They play together a lot. They've they have known each other for years. They're, they're <clears throat> You can switch either one of them out, if you ask me. When it comes down to the draft picks, you're really just – I, I don't. I don't too much care where they come. I just want to get them, get the best ones that I can get that suit our team. You know, as as the time comes. But we was hoping for Berkeley on on the back around. We wanted to keep Jordan, no matter. I know that we had a little debacle as soon as Jordan came to the table, and we all respect Jordan. We we love Jordan. Years before the ACO even got established, you know, me and Jamie and Jordan and Tyler used to all travel together. We stayed at Jordan's house at his dad's house before he got his own place. You know, we've been friends for years. But when you want to go for the first pick, the second pick, you're looking for leaders, especially mm-hmm. on in a team in a team event. And you know, just the way he kind of moseyed up to the table, we're looking for you know expert assistance. You know, and he comes up. You know, it just it, it wasn't it wasn't the, the typical Jordan that I'm used to seeing. So mm-hmm. whenever I think Berkeley got picked up, I still wanted wanted Jordan. But and we come we tried a couple of different trades. We we talked with the Texas team for 30 minutes. Mm-hmm. Trying to get trying to get Berkeley off of some of the you know some different strategies, but that's what it took to get him, and I and I had to have him. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, but when it comes to the James wise, uh, I don't. I love James. He is he is literally my, one of my top three players of all time. I mean, me me as a father, I know what it's like whenever you have a newborn kid and how hard it is to to stay on top of the game and how hard it is to travel. And I get it. I mean. Jordan James is a world champion with Jordan and without Jordan, and he's going to be a world champion with the Carolina Coasters. So I don't care what anybody has to say on Facebook. I don't live in that land. I live in the reality, and I, all I care about is my team. So we're only focused on ourselves, and everybody can say what they want to, but we really do not care over in the Carolinas. We live in a show-me state, and we're going to show you what we got. Well, James <laughs> is a classic example for me of what have you done for me lately? James is a world champion. He is an elite player. But if he hasn't won back-to-back months or in the spotlight the entire time, it seems like the rest of the world forgets about him. But the mm-hmm. one thing about James Baldwin that you guys are getting, which I think is phenomenal early rounds, is that he is one of the best doubles players on the planet. If you don't have to worry about switching his arm inside, outside, things like that, and he could just stay consistent where he's at, he's going to get you guys some dubs throughout the season. Well, Steve, I, will, I will also add, I, I want to add, it worked out so perfectly. People don't, a lot of people in the ACL don't know this, but all the people that's been playing for a long time know about Derek King and James Baldwin. Now these guys, whenever we used to travel before ACL, we used to, you know, go to Kentucky somewhere and wouldn't hardly make enough money to pay for the trip just to compete at the highest level. And the way we made our money was to go up and play some cash games. That's how we, that's how we pay for the weekend. Now me and Jamie has had our share of huge cash games. And so has JB and uh, Derek King. So put them boys on TV and put something sticky in their hand and they're going to create an electric show for you. I promise you. Let's talk about that for a second. I think it was Bernie that said you guys have, what, 13 players that have TV experience? Is that correct? Well, we dropped one with TV experience. I mean, we had 15 at one time. Everybody everybody on our team is killers. So for anybody that wants to hate and stuff like that, man, keep it to yourself because we don't care. We know what we're doing. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> no, I mean, I think that regardless of what people say about specific decisions you make, I don't think anybody out there does not think that the Carolina Coasters are a stacked team. Like, I think... Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, Trey's putting out grades. We have he hasn't done your guys' grade yet, but I I feel like it's going to be a, a positive grade. I don't think anyone is thinking that, even though I might pick yeah. a certain thing. Someone apart. tells me Trey well, don't care about that grade. I'm, <laughs> I'm telling. I mean, the the God's honest truth. I mean, the God's honest truth about us, not just me. It's about the Carolinas in a whole. Why do you think we're so elite? Why do you think the both states, the region in general, is so dominant in the game of, in the game of sports? I mean, in the game of cornhole is because we all know each other. We all play together all the time. I mean, we have such elite talent in the Carolinas. We work together. We like to tear each other's heads off, but we also are a big family. I mean, we're, and, and we work together. We know what's going on. And so we're not really worried about anybody's opinion. And especially when it comes to stats, like I would still challenge the media. I would challenge the people with the, the stats behind the scenes that they don't know any more about the game than me and Jamie and Eric do. Because we've been around the game for, t- for 10, 12 years before, before y'all have been in here. Right. You know, we we, we watched it for a year. 
We're just, I mean, just winging it. <laughs> but I mean, literally, literally, we know we know these players. Even the, the players that I don't know, I know them because I've seen them play, and I've been around the game for so long. We know who to pick and who not to pick, and who and who's going to shine under the lights and who's not. Well, you also know what's, hap what's happening behind the scenes, right? Like you guys are playing with these people for hours and weekends and years. And so you know what we're not seeing that's happening in, in the spotlight. So I think that's important. Are you guys putting together any kind of like team activities or bonding or practices or what's kind of your thoughts going forward to bring your team together? Well, see, 75% of our team hangs out anyways. Right. Yeah. We we already know each other. We already know. I mean, it's going to be off the ch charts. When you see all 16 of us together in the same jerseys on the same courts, man, people ain't going to know what to do with us. What about the 25%, right? Because we got we want them to feel like part of your team as well. So what can you do to help include them? Well, we have a group chat. All of us have a group chat. And I mean, we've, we've thrown some comedy in there and we're definitely laughing about the naysayers, but uh, we know what we're capable of and we work together. So it's, it's a slow process because we're also focused on our own games at this time, trying to rev up for the pro tour. But the team event is going to be special this year. I think, uh, I mean, they're definitely pumping some money into it. I care about it. Our team cares about it way more than we did last year. And I think uh, the team's event has a bright future and we're going to put a lot of our effort into being the best that we can be. All right, we are back. Like I said, I got so uh, into what Trevor was saying, I forgot we had to take a break. But Wally, go ahead. All right, so J Jamie, uh, one question that I have for you, whenever you were deciding who to take on teams, like uh, there's seven different teams that you put together to try and get the win for your overall squad. When you were drafting, were you looking at, I just got to win four, or were you trying to win all seven, or what was your strategy as far as breaking down your pairings? Um, I just wanted the best. Uh, I wanted people that had experience on TV, I know I know killers, and I, I know I know people who will let's just say choke on TV. And uh, the way I the way I mean, we all picked it together. But uh, let's say so Jordan and James, we end up getting Berkeley and James, and then DK's a killer. I know he's fighting back from uh, personal issues and all that, but DK's a killer. He's been playing this game uh, a little bit longer than me, like in the twelve year range. So. Um, Eric, Kaylee, I know Kaylee, she can do what she does when she does it here. If she just does it and shows the whole world, she'd be dominant as any female in the division. Um, Trevor and Berkeley's going to be a great team. They they got chemistry. I mean, let's see, they played – Trevor played one shootout last year and literally the last one in California and got into the finals, I think, right? Y'all played Tyler Parent and uh, Brevin. Mm -hmm. But him and Berkeley – is really like uh like the old man Trevor. It's just the chemistry works, and they play really good together, and that's what I see when I see him and Berkeley play. But um, I didn't really we didn't really go by these four are going to be the dominants, and then the other three are going to be okay. Hopefully they win. I mean I really think the team we got. I mean we have a good chance to go seven and zero oh every single time. I mean. Even our back end, like Lori Miranda, that that's a really good team, I think, for like picking up later in the rounds. But uh Drew Ken Allen. Ken yeah, we uh um we dropped Matthew Morton and picked up Ken Allen. Mm -hmm. And Ken Allen, I, I went and looked at his PPR because I couldn't believe he was still available because I know who he is. And Ken Allen's like PPR is like a nine three four and Matthew Morton's like eight eleven. I'm like, hold up, why Why is Ken Allen on our team? So we made a decision and we dropped Morton and got Ken Allen. Uh, and then also our last pick of the uh, draft was Drew Brown. Like, mm -hmm. how does nobody have Drew Brown on, on the team? He's a veteran in the sport. He's been playing for a long time. And But I think we got really good steals in the end of the draft. So I think we're going to be great. I think I think we have a great team. Great experience, great bonding as a as a whole. So I think we'll be good. Yeah, I was kind of surprised looking back at your team afterwards about how many elite players, not really elite, but I'd say really, really good players that you guys got. Your top end is obviously very strong yeah. with you three as being captains, and your, your pairings that you mentioned pretty much speak for themselves. But I was pretty shocked at how well you guys did um, in the 13th spot. So coming in prepared definitely shows – 
you know, that you guys did your homework. You got exactly what you're going after. Quick question I got, though, is are we going to see Jimmy Graham and Trevor Brooks again in any of these teams match up? You guys going to pair up for at least one? Uh, and it really depends. Uh, like I, I want it. I want it. I plan to play with uh, <laughs> Chad Hunt. Okay. But, I mean, you never know. We might slip it in there, put Chad with Berkeley or something. We might change it up. I know Trevor's been asking me on the side to play with him next year. He's been begging me to play with him. So <laughs> he blows up your phone, right? Yeah, yeah. You want you don't want to see my call log. Well, what's what <laughs> what's better, having uh, Trevor Brooks on the other end of the boards, or having Trevor Brooks as your hype man in your corner? Yeah, mm. good call. I'm both at the same time. <laughs> yeah. He's both. No doubt. <laughs> now you said that you know you're surprised but some of the players that were still there because they're veterans but you have to remember a lot of the pro field are not veterans right a lot of newer players coming in so they don't know potentially some of those names i think you had a big leg up there um being in the game so long um when you did drop matthew morton i mean i can't imagine that was easy to do if you're you just kind of, I would imagine, feel bad. Um, but how did that go? Because you knew you had to pick up Ken Allen. What a great come up with his PPR. So what was that decision like for you? Uh, I knew I texted the group chat. or well, not the group chat, the the cap, co-captains and Dusty. And uh, I said, look, so Ken Allen's on the list. He's throwing a 9-3-4. He throws, uh, what is y'all's company, Trevor? Uh, West Georgia, the Titan bags. So mm -hmm. I was like, I think he'll be mm -hmm. a good fit for the team. Um, I'm like, I know Matthew Mort has experience on TV, but he's – I haven't seen nothing even close to being what he was in 2020 in the last two years. And I said, what do y'all think? Do you think we should drop him and pick up Ken Allen? And they were just comparing the stats and stuff, and it makes sense. Like, it, yeah. it's, you got to do it. But yeah. – I mean, I, I know Matthew Morton. I know his dad. I'm good friends with, with both of them. And, I mean, it, it wasn't like a – it's a little bit different than the Canvas situation. I, I feel bad about this one. I don't feel bad about the Canvas situation. So Yeah. I but, can imagine. Yeah. Do you guys uh, feel honored yeah. to be part of history making a first trade in the first drop, basically? Yeah. <laughs> mm. We got – we're going to be plan. making – we plan on making a lot of history, Wally. A lot of history. <laughs> not surprised <laughs> um i will i would do want to add one thing about that strategy that he was that he was going on where y'all was how wh what our strategy was compared to other people's strategy we don't really can afterwards of course in hindsight 2020 i watched back at the draft and i see how people pick their teams and how we pick our teams and you know compare them and just to see where we could have i don't see how we could have done any better we got everybody that we wanted to get along the lines just because we wasn't looking at the list you know me and eric and jamie were talking about we had a list of players to keep our mind our, our eyes on we didn't look at no no charts no stats nothing we had a, i had about 30 people eric had about 30 people jamie had about 25 30 people and as they got gone we took we walked we marked them off you know that's who we want on our team you know i don't care how they're playing right now how they played last year we want them on our team because great players make players great you know great leaders make players great so when people's looking at a list like they're so many pros got dropped down down to the bottom of the list as Trey and everybody alluded to it's because they were looking at the at the rookies or the or the P, or the you know the PD, PDA what a uh, yeah PDC <laughs> okay yeah they were looking at all these kids they were looking at these numbers you know so they were going off the top of the sheets me and, they, and there are so many kids that got picks high and ha have no broadcast experience you know they right. they're great players they 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 kick all these pros butts oh blah, blah blah you know but have you seen them perform in front of a crowd before you know have you seen what happens whenever their earbuds mess up you know <laughs> i mean I, we literally we literally wanted dogs no, we don't want just good players everybody can play now everybody can play we want dogs and we want dogs that can hunt and we got what we wanted we got we got nothing but hunters on our team it's, I mean, it is risky. I would agree with you. Without the broadcast experience, I see your point. We don't. Yeah, we. That's what we want. The first pick. Let me get the world champ. Let me get JB. Let me get Derek King. You know, let me get a Mike Harvey, and I can throw him with anybody. Let me get Lori Duell, who's a who's a dog. You know, I mean, we want people that ain't afraid. They want to play on the on the broadcast. They don't skip skip the tournament. I want to go on up there and, and kick some butt up there in front of everybody and show them who's the boss. You know, that's who we want on the team. We don't care if you threw a nine point. 
nine and then had a 1.5 DPR last week or the last month. No, I want to know what you're going to do under the lights. Right. Yeah. I'm glad that we had you guys on because it seems, it seems like whenever I talk to a lot of other captains off the cameras, they were, they're talking about wanting the team. They want this guy. They want this guy. They want this guy. You guys are looking at it as a whole. Like mm-hmm. we want this as to happen team. as far as a, the entire year, you know, we're, we're thinking yeah. broadcast. We're thinking yeah. long. I mean, but if you, a, if you think about it, Different approach. I like people, it. people stack it. People stack in their teams with the highest PPR from over there and over yonder and over there and over yonder. And whenever they go to meet, they're gonna have a team meeting right before the tournament start. They're gonna be introducing each other. You know, yep. when we come to the when we come to the tournament, we're gonna be, you know, we already know what's up. They're gonna we have a, going a handshake, a, a celebratory dance. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but, but I mean, also being comfortable, being comfortable with your surroundings and your teammates, and believing your teammates pulls the best out of you. Like I don't, I don't care that he throws a ten point two and he throws a ten point one. Like I get along with him better. I think he's gonna play better for me. Yeah, no, you're right. Well, we got okay. We got to wrap up here, but I have one last question. You guys, uh, Jamie, you had the woodchucks chant. You guys did. <laughs> so what's what's the Carolina coaster thing? What's gonna be your signature thing when you win? Take your shirt off, <laughs> twist it around your head like a helicopter. <laughs> oh man, Kitty Cobb. <laughs> nah, nah, nah. We ain't gonna rock with that. No, nah. because I'm from South Carolina. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only thing play. Jamie hasn't planned. Yeah, yeah he, he, planned that. No, he plays Britney Spears and his earbuds when he's playing. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. We knew it, Jamie. That's that's exactly what I pegged you for. You got right. it. Trevor's gonna be the next drop. See you coming. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. Thank you so much for spending some time with us here on Bagging and Bragging, and we wish you all the luck this season and we are excited to watch it. So thanks so much. You're ready. We're coming. We're ready. <laughs> All right, boys. Thanks. See you. All right. Bye. See you. All right. We've got clips. We've got clips from open number three. We're going to watch some uh, amazing cornhole shots. We're going to talk about it. It's going to be awesome. Are you ready? Wally, are you ready? I'm ready. I'm excited. And uh, right. it was pretty cool, by the way, watching this on five times speed. So the editing software, oh, wow. lets go, yeah, lets me go from three to five now. So we're getting through these now quicker. That's pretty crazy. Yeah. All right, here we go. Let's go with n- number five. We got Jordan Power. We got Carson Getty. Yeah, this is a new Carson oh. Getty. We got. I didn't expect it to happen that fast. Okay, hold on. Let me yeah, go yeah. back. Yeah, we got to start at the beginning. Uh, beginning. Give them all his credit. All right. Here we go. So, so there's a bag in front. That's Jordan's. Carson Getty throws it. And one. And one. And then he just likes uh, throwing Jordan Powers bags all over the place. So here's a slick side push. I believe he was throwing the vortex zones that day. Could be the shelters. So. Did that yeah. bag fall? Do you know? It, yeah, it fell in uh, Jordan's very next shot. So okay. this is okay. what we kind of talked about uh, a couple episodes ago. You know, this is the new Carson this year. You know, he's He's got the bag that he wants to throw, th- throwing the vortex and He's got the partner in Matt Trox on the other end, so he's he's got a little confidence going into the season. I lot- was shocked at how far he went in the draft. Yeah, yeah, I, especially with the uh, Missouri Maze because uh, John Fuentes was a co-captain with Ryan Windsor, and I want to say they got third in their bracket, something like that. I, they went far, yeah. Yeah, yeah so I, fe- I felt like that was going to be a recency bias pick. Where they're just going to say, you know, Carson's been throwing very well the entire season. If we can kind of control him and stop trying to get him to do the hey, look at me thing and just throw bags in the hole. I mean, he's more than capable of helping your team win some win some matches. Um, but yeah. after this match, uh, Jordan Power came over to me. And actually, it wasn't this match. It was the doubles match they played. So this is the second time they scored up this weekend. But Jordan Power came over and said something. He's like, I don't know what Carson's doing, but it's working. He's, it's working. he's throwing very well. So. Definitely yeah. looking forward to seeing Carson this season. I'm going to play it one more time. So we got an and one and then a bar of soap from Carson Getty at open number three. Beautiful. Yeah, just throwing Jordan's bags all over the place. Yeah, he's like, I was going to say, F your bags. Whoa, uh, me. I don't know if I'm allowed to say that. Whoa, yeah, whoa, say it again. whoa. Say it again. I got a censor button. <laughs> <laughs> That would have been funny, actually. <laughs> Had we planned better. Had we it planned still better? Is that? Funny. Yeah. Okay. Well. Yeah. I guess. <laughs> uh, we'll get. We'll get the buttons. We'll get the buttons. I need like a little side table. I need a side table here so it's closer to me. You have a side table to the other side. Is that just no, too far so away? It's wide open. Oh, back there. Yeah. 
All right, I don't know. It's hard to tell depth <laughs> perception from this point of view. All right, ready for number four? Here we go. Let's go. Let's go. Number four. Where we, so number where, four, I believe this is uh, this is either doubles or blind draw. I can't see what it says at the bottom there, but this is uh, Marcus Galladay throwing against David Brown over here on the left hand side. What a grab that was! Play it again. It happened so fast. I wish we had slow mo. Yeah, so we have we have uh, David Brown right there pushing through. So we basically collect five bags in these two shots. You can see he was going for that slick, and then Marcus is kind of like, well, I don't know what I want to do here. I mean, <laughs> backside's open. Let me go ahead and get these two points, and then he hits it perfectly, gets four, fires himself up. And that's that's why I make the clips right there. I love yeah. the people reactions. Yeah, I'm trying to get to uh, – I won't oh, – I'm going to watch it again. I wanted to see the reaction because I missed it. Like, I love it right there. Yeah. So, like, wait, how many bags did he just grab? With his little like nonchalant like, uh, I think eh, it was it's three, okay. three bags. On yeah, the push. he's like, like yeah. here you, you grab three bags and you're like, well, it was okay. Yeah, he's like, I'm fine with that, and he's actually sitting in pretty good position here. He's forcing uh, Marcus to go up top. He's taking the bait. This is exactly what you want in this situation. The only thing yeah. he didn't do, Just hope for the miss. Do, he didn't do the Devin Hardball. <laughs> you got to cross <laughs> yeah, your fingers yeah. up. To come, come on, man. That's, That's how you that get was, your point. That was the demise right there. Yeah, you're right. That's experience, though. That's experience. <laughs> It'll come. You'll get it. All right. Let's go to number three. All right. All right so I'm going to pop it. So we're kind of talking about uh, switching the name of the segment. I think we might do it next time to Skilled or Thrilled. Yeah. This is the okay, shot. One of those. Twice with Caden Allen. Caden Allen's hit the shot twice. <clears throat> and now Alec Ryan hits it again. So it's almost like a rodeo. But with the bags in the position they were, I don't know if you can rewind a little bit, Misha. They, they okay. look like they're in a teepee in front of the hole. Let's see. And like a okay, yeah. Right there. Nico comes in right behind it. Nico's kind of like, well, that's really all I could do this round. I don't want to push through it. That's the perfect bag. Yep. And again, you're forcing the other player to take the bait. You want them to shoot this hair mill. With the bags, they, they kind of look like they're TP'd up a little bit. Could clog or it could trampoline. And that's what I was kind of thinking. The trampoline off the back, Nico still gets one here. Right. So Alec goes ahead and throws his bag. Yep, and lands and on the it, pile perfectly. Perfect. I mean, like, you, what can you do? <laughs> like, well, that's that. <laughs> yeah, the only other thing he could have done is maybe push into the pile, and hopefully it clogs it a little bit more. But I mean, that's a situation. Oh, like Nico could have, yeah. had his bag a little like pushed those bags against the back of the hole. Yeah, but then he's would have been risky kicking, though, kicking off to the side. Yeah, so I mean, I probably would have done the same thing Nico would have done. Um, I mean, but, he even touched those bags mm -hmm. with his block. But yeah, skilled or thrilled. And then Alec Ryan, actually, I think there's more to this clip. Yeah, so he's taking oh, yeah. on Joe Neistead here. You can see the situation shaping up. It, it's pretty ugly. This score right here is 19 to 2. This is 12. game of oh, 1912, sorry. Um, going into this game, I think this is game two. He was down 16 to 4. Wow. Joe Neistead just got done playing Samantha Finley through an 11 point. That's right. Seven, three. I remember this. Something like that. Something nasty. Missed his last bag. And he was just, he was pissed. He was like, man, I could have thrown over an 11, seven, five. If I would have made that last, I was like, I think you did. Uh, okay, bud. You're, yeah, you're fine. I don't think be mad. <laughs> and then he pretty much continued it in game one against Alec Ryan. So Alec Ryan was down 16 to four. And this isn't really looking much better for him here. These bags are kind of all out of, all over the place. I, I thought this Alec, was Joe's opening Alec win. takes a big uh, step out preparing for his shot. Joe sneaks around, and Alec is ready for his collect on that side and somehow grabs all of them. Mm -hmm. Perfect <laughs> speed going into that. You can see that he uses Joe's bag as a bumper and kind of just pushes everything in. Perfect speed, perfect landing spot to collect everything. Joe's reaction right there says it all. Yeah, he. Know, I mean, he's. what can you do? It's a, it, it's just an amazing shot. Is, there not, is that the end of this one? Yeah, but without, without that shot, oh, it's all black. Yeah, okay. But Should without that shot, though, Alec doesn't go on to win that open. So hats off, yeah, Alec, it's, coming back. It, it, it's a clutch shot, and this is why, you know, him being drafted in the first round makes sense to me because mm -hmm. if you can, if you can hit shots when you have to hit shots, not when you're up twenty to two. But when you're down 20 to two, uh, I mean, that's, that's the kind of person you want in a first round pick on your team. So I think very, very well deserved. It does create the debate though, about chasing bags. Because oh, what do you mean? He's, like, def he's definitely chasing bags this round on the shot. 
but he has to. I mean, I guess he doesn't have. I don't know what the score was right there. So it's nineteen twelve here. He doesn't have to because Joe. No, I mean on the board. On the board. So. Oh yeah, it was pretty much. Uh, so Joe like had one on two at this situation. Oh here. yeah, they still have all their bags. So yeah, he yeah. didn't have to. And one thing but, I would like to see Joe do here, once I see Alex stepping out, I love doing this. Alex has already stepped out right here. He already tells you what he's doing. Yep, I'm blocking. I know. Uh, I actually am guilty of not doing that, but being the one that steps out and having them block it on and being like, shit, I should have stepped out. <laughs> the, the premature stepper outer? <laughs> yes. I mean, I'm, I'm just thinking ahead, but yeah, you're right. You kind of give up your play. Yeah, it's like chess um, and poker. You got to kind of slow mm -hmm. play it a little bit. Yeah, so he really didn't have to, but at the same time, it was really not that risky because Joe's bag is there. So the chances of him sliding off were so low. If anything, he could have bunched up in front, which still would have made it difficult for Joe. I can't remember if Joe rolls or not. Uh, he, so. He's working on it. He's working okay. on it. Okay. But it's really, it's really a perfect landing spot. You could. It's hard to see if he's throwing slick or stick with the cannons and the kill shot cannon bags, but you see where the Stevie Award is, or the Stevie logo, I say award. Stevie logo is right below his two cannons there. He he needs to land in between that logo and his bags to collect this. And that's mm. the perfect landing spot with the perfect speed on it. So got it. Good shot. Right. Alex. What was that? Number three. That was three. Now we're going to two. Yeah. This one's a little bit longer of a clip. You can see the scores 19, nothing Ryan Windsor and Nico got paired up for the blind draw. Uh, Chad Taylor and Alex Hicks actually start a little run here right after this round, but Alex Hicks has just had enough of Ryan Windsor. So I want to <laughs> show you Alex Hicks picking on Ryan yeah. Windsor here. We should mention that it's 19 to zero right now. Mm -hmm. up Windsor Morales. So yeah, Hicks, Hicks got something, something to do here. Did every clip Wind so far have spark apparel in it? I don't on know. T -shirt? No. Okay. The last one didn't. Alex tried Carson to get the end one there. Gets a clean air mail. Ryan goes for, I don't yeah, actually like, know what he was. was it, he's was going it for the airmail there. Misses the airmail rimmed out. Oh my goodness. And then we got the penguin. Yeah, <laughs> I was, didn't know what was coming. That was so fun. Let's start. Let's watch that. It's so, it's so good. Yeah, it's this a shot blows my mind. Like, I would love to see that in slow motion because. L look at the facial expression right there. From <laughs> yeah, yeah, the smirk. <laughs> he's, I don't know who he's looking at, but he's just like. He's like, what? No, he's like, this is going to be, this is the equivalent to the uh, basketball player dunking over the other one. I forget who it was. Yeah, well, the fact that you can pick up a bag and take it over the bag in front is like, who decided that was possible? I mean, it's just the yeah, penguin. Anthony, is Anthony went on a uh, his show and did a breakdown, I believe, of how the penguins actually executed. But you can get a you get a good camera angle of it here. The bag coming right at it, perfectly flat, and you just again perfect landing spot and good speed right underneath it. Collects that front bag and then he just kind of rolls over the top. It like feels like it defies physics, but I know that it doesn't. But I've done it once. You've done I've, it. I've taken, on purpose? I take it back. I've done it twice. Done it once on purpose. Okay. Yeah. It it was it was like okay. I'm down. I think it was like 19. It was pretty much like that. I was down like 19 to three or something. I was like, just do something. Desperation shot. I hit it for the wash. I actually almost got the and one, which would have been what. Epic. Yeah, I, and I'm, I would have been so mad if I hit it without being recorded, of course. But I, I hit the shot, pushed his bag on the back of the hole just a little bit closer to going off. It was kind of set up similar to that, but I collected my bag in front, and you just can't help but smile after you hit it. So. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. All right, here we go. Numero uno. What'd you get for us? Numero uno. They're in the middle of a timeout. Invisible players here, Mish. Wait, oh. Why did it start in the middle? That was weird. Uh, we All probably right. had it when we loaded it in. But this is just looking like a normal round with these two guys. Just ugly in front of the hole. Really nothing going on. Nothing yeah, big fancy. Big old mess. <laughs> Alec has two bags left in hand. I, I don't remember where Tony's other bag is. I think it's already off the board. Okay, so we were just talking about this last night, Bernie and I, because we were wondering like when Tony made this shot, mm -hmm. once again, skill, skill or thrill question. Um, and we were trying to remember whether or not you know, if Tony were to aim to sit on top of this pile, would that benefit him or not? And I couldn't remember what the bags look like around the hole. But now that I see it, so Tony's bag is hanging over the hole underneath Alex's bag. By the way, look at this freeze frame. What is Alec doing? <laughs> he's getting ready to spin it. But he's like, <laughs> <laughs> it looks like he's looks like taking, a swig. To the taking a swig of his cornhole bag or 
Just angry at something. I don't know. I know. All right. So now time oh, out. He's on his head. Well, that was weird. Alec, <laughs> Alec is a character. I love him. He is. He definitely is. So he's going to go take a look at what's possible here. And I want to ask Tony if. So what's going through shot- your head if you're taking the shot, Mish? What are you I doing mean, here? I mean, I just want to know if he was trying to make the shot he made, the coin slot, as we're calling it, um, because I just have to know, did he think he could slide his bag in like this direction? Like, it, I guess, you, you know, wheel it through. Like, I guess when you're that good of a player, you could think you could do that. It's hard for me to comprehend. But it would also make sense that he was going to sit on top and then it happened to fall. Yeah, so I'm, I think he was trying to roll on top of it, but I watched this probably four or five times before we came on here. And I kind of think he was going for it. You think? I I don't know what he saw there where he thought he had enough room. I think maybe he was just trying to roll and collect maybe his and the other one might get, like the kill shots might get hung up in the front. Yeah. I'm not sure, but I I just... It wouldn't surprise me if it was intentional. It it wouldn't surprise me if it was intentional at all. Yeah, I feel like if he was trying to cover it, he would have thrown it a little bit higher, but... I don't know. He just had the right amount of speed on it, hits it perfectly, and then somehow gets it to turn on its end <laughs> and just goes straight. But in he there. didn't look shocked. He looked like, yes, that's what I was trying to do. Now, is that acting? I don't know. <laughs> he's been in Hollywood lately. It's, you know, he's the California <laughs> Slingers head coach or whatever. That's right. But, oh, uh, man. Yeah, we got some awkward knuckles here, oh, too. This wow, clip yeah. has it all. And then here it is right here. He's like, I'm not going to smile. I'm not going to smile. Oh, I got to smile. <laughs> it's, it's okay, okay to smile, you young kids. Enjoy <laughs> I it. I didn't catch on to that, but that's pretty funny. He's like, I don't want to act like that was really cool, but that was really freaking cool. <laughs> it was. Yeah, I mean, there there wasn't much room there at all. During the broadcast, Tornado and myself were just going crazy. We're like, Where's all that for hole? a wash, though, right? Where's that was the, all for I a wash. I believe it was a wash. I forgot to check the score after this. I, I was clipping it and I forgot to look at it, but I, I think Tony's first bag might have been off, but I can't remember. Oh, okay, I got it. But either way, well, I mean, even if it's only three points, it was just a nasty three points. I mean, this has pretty much already got shot of the year contention written on it. Absolutely, so. I can't imagine something more remarkable than this. So it's the fact that that bag, like, no, I don't think anybody's thinking about a bag going in the hole in that direction. <laughs> like, like, bloop. I mean, hence the name coin slot. But, you know, he, most he of us think the bag's going to, most of us think the bag is going to go in this way, like flat, not on its side. <laughs> yeah, I didn't see it coming. It was just nasty. I, it blew my mind when it happened. And I mean, pretty much this entire tournament, I, I do want to give a shout out to Alec Ryan because this entire tournament seemed like everything was against him. I mean, yeah. he got the king seat in his bracket. Joe Neistad throwing over an 11 going into the championship match up big, 16 to 4. Then was it 19 to 12 in that last clip? And then Tony Smith is hitting shots like this against you. <laughs> yeah. And then, what do you do? And then he took on Ryan Wiedenfeld in the finals. I was like, this is everything's against him. But yeah. uh, ultimately, Alec Ryan bursts onto the scene, takes his draft stock way up the board. And yeah. he's, earned, he's earned it. He's earned everything he's gotten this season. I couldn't agree more. All right, Wally. I think that's I think that's the show. I think we cover everything. That'll do it. That'll do it. We're, we're either getting better or worse, Misha. I can't tell. <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't know. Well, you know, we don't like to use um, judgments around here. We just kind of It's getting like fun, though. I'll tell you that much. I'm having a blast. <laughs> that's all that matters. All right. all right, guys. That's it for this time. We will see you guys all next week.